In this video I'm going to compare a tiny SA that has a known uh, attenuator issue and another one that has no issues. I believe the defective one was caused by a ESD event. It worked initially and then stopped working properly at some point. So to do a quick uh, functional check you can run this self-test routine under config and self-test. And the last step is the attenuator. And that fails. At a minimum the attenuator step will fail depending on what condition the failure mode is. Um, other steps may also fail. So to test the attenuator, go to mode, turn your calibration output to 30 megahertz, go back to the return to low in, and I had already preset this up, but I'll just do it again. Then the frequency, center frequency of 30 megahertz, that puts it in the middle, and then the span of 1 megahertz. It's already set, so it's not going to look like it's changing. And then the way to test the attenuator is to go to measure, more, and linear. This will start over now. So basically this green bar is showing the peak level and it's sweeping through each attenuator level starting at 31.5 I believe and then going all the way down to zero. And on a working unit which is on the right here you'll have a very flat line plus or minus I believe a half dB or and this non-working one it'll move around depending on which attenuator is switched in at the time. And while that's running, I'll show a little part of the data sheet here. This is a table of the attenuation states. So built in, it appears there's a half dB, a 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16 dB of uh, attenuation available. The 31.5 is turning all of them on at the same time, so you can get anything between 0 and 31.5. So if you want 3, you switch on the 2 and the 1 dB. So each division here is 10 dB, so you can already tell it's off more than it should be. The max of the green compared to the min is... So far it looks like, you know, maybe 5 dB or so. And it might get worse here. And it's jumping down all of a sudden here. Okay, so the one on the left is basically done. Widely varying levels. And the one on the right, I just started again. Okay, and here the one on the right is just finishing up, and that looks good. So to manually check the attenuator, you can also go to the level menu, go to attenuate, manual, and then type in a value. So I'll start at zero, and then note the reference, or the peak level here, 24, 25. And I know that the 2 dB and the 8 dB attenuators have the issue. So this would be considered a known good state, 24.5. I'll manually type in 2. So that's switching on the 2 dB attenuator. And it's going down more than it should. 
because um, this should compensate automatically so if you switch in 2 dB it should compensate and always show the same level regardless of the attenuation so if, for example I go to 30 dB spectrum analyzers are generally set up to compensate and show the actual level so the level should always be correct regardless of your attenuation if you put external attenuators in you'd have to manually compensate for the level So I'll put in another uh, known good one, uh, 4 dB, and then we're back up to 24. So another known good one is uh, the 16 dB attenuator, so I'll switch that in. So that should give a very similar level. So that's within a half dB. And I'll switch in a known bad one here, and that's the, I'll try the 8 dB. Now we're like minus 30, so that's off by several dB. Then also all, any combination of 8 plus 1 or 8 plus 2, they'll all be off by that amount. 8 plus 2 actually would be off by even more because the 2 dB is also damaged. So if I go 10 dB, it's off by even more now. I'll go back to a known good one, 4 dB. And we're back up to normal. And the same thing on this one. Level, attenuate, manual. I can switch in the 2 dB. I'll start with verify 0 first. Minus 26.2, so that's kind of our baseline. Put in 1 dB. That's pretty close. 2 dB, that's about the same. Try the 4 dB, about the same. 8 dB, that's good. And then 16 dB. So basically, you could manually check each one by doing uh, the 0.5 D, dB. 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Those are all the individual components. Any other combination or any steps in between will be combinations. Okay, so my plan is to open this up and replace the attenuator IC. I got a bag of 10 of them here so I can make uh, nine mistakes. Switch box through the hole there, so lift it from this side. This ground strap is from some previous testing I did. So this is the low input. It's upside down, so it's on this side. So I'll remove this can. There's some tiny clips around the perimeter that hold it. So stick a small screwdriver under here, careful not to angle down much, kind of pry up and see if there's somewhere over here I can pry up without damaging it, kind of just prying up on the side wall a little bit. Small spot here. and lift. Okay, and this is the attenuator I see. So according to the data sheet I believe there's a pad in the center so that's likely soldered to the PCB so I'll plan to use the hot air because of that. If you desoldered the pins around the perimeter with desolder wick that probably wouldn't be enough because you'd still have that center connection so I'm going to use hot air, try not to break anything. There's a LCD on the opposite side, so hopefully nothing overheats. And it looks like pin 1, that little white dot there I believe is the pin 1 marker. I'm going to start around 
150C just to kind of warm up the whole area. temperature up higher. I'm not even sure what's preferred for this. I've got it set to 350. Start off a little voice back and heat the area around it some. So I'm going to put this under the microscope and use some desolder wick to remove the solder off the pads and then I'll prepare to put the new part on. So these are a flux pen or just a flux syringe. Helps a lot for removing solder. I just spread a little bit around here. Even though the soldering wick usually has some powdered flux embedded in it. using a chisel tip to kind of have a flat surface to push against the solder wick. So I have some lead solder paste and some lead free solder paste. Both of them are well beyond expired so I'm just going to hope one of these works. I'm just going to do a little test run on some PCB material and see which one flows better and then I'll use that one. So I'm not even sure if this board was lead free or not. Ideally you'd match the solder type to what was on the board. This is the lead free I believe. Here's some leaded. Seems like the leaded flows better. I decided to only put the solder paste on the ground pins. And then I'll just finish the outer pins that are remaining with regular solder after reflowing these. Since the pins don't protrude, it's hard to even see to align this. You have to tip it up quite a bit to see the side of the pins. Microscope doesn't have much clearance to get the hot air gun in here and see it at the same time. You can see it starting to reflow. Oh, 
whole thing shifted a little bit. I'm not sure if it's mine now. Okay, I'll stop and take a look. <laughs> 